Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hauser. Welcome to the Hauser Neck Center here in Fort Myers, Florida. Here with an old friend. We've known each other, what, like probably ever since I started prolotherapy, right? Right, probably. So uh, Linda is was an originally a patient of Dr. Hemwall's who was my teacher. I took over the practice of Dr. Hemwall. Dr. Hemwall died in 1998, so that would have been 25 years ago. So the amount of people that have been treated by him and then treated by me, it's getting less and less because obviously as the years goes on. So I just appreciate you being here. You and I, when was the last time we saw each other? That would have been 19 years ago at the end of August. Okay, so I haven't seen you for 19, 19 years, years and then I appreciate you being here. But why don't you just introduce who you are and then uh, your husband's a pastor. So maybe just give us some background about who you are. And then how did you end up going to see Dr. Hemwall? And then there's a lot of people here who are going to see this video for the first time and they won't even know like is prolotherapy helpful is it is or isn't it? Okay, I'm Linda Swar, and my husband is Carl, and he's he is a pastor. Um, What's the church name? Christian Missionary Alliance, and it's in Curtis, Wisconsin. Okay. Uh, and he's been pastoring for 34 years there at that particular church. I first went to Dr. Hemwall in 1991. I had had my fifth child, but I was sleeping on a reclining chair for 11 mm -hmm. months. I could not lay down. Okay. Uh, I just, I had too much pain, I couldn't lay down in my lower spine. And at that time, um, it was getting so bad, even though I was in a reclining chair, I said to my husband, I have to do something else, I can't, you know. And the only thing that the medical field had offered is you can get your spine fused together, and I wasn't anxious to do that. So at that point, we had called uh, the IBLP, uh, ATI, uh, homeschool department, uh, they had a doctors in their health care department mm -hmm. and they recommend that I go to Dr. Hemmel. So you went to Oak Park, Illinois and that's where, right, I, that's where I was originally working. Uh, how far is it from Curtis to Oak Park? Oh, it was about six hours. Okay, so that's a long truck. Yeah. Did did he just do your lower back or he did some other areas with No, he treated a lot of areas with me. In okay. fact, he would get other people, uh, doctors that he was training yeah. and nurses and stuff to come in and watch my treatment because he treated so many areas. He would treat my complete spine, neck down. Okay. And then I've had hips treated and I had uh, elbows and wrists and you name it, my knees, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, but I was having a, a severe problem with my lower back. Mm -hmm. I would go numb from my waist down at night uh, and then all that tingling coming back and that lasted for a few years mm -hmm. was really hard and so uh, that's why I was seeking treatment. So you probably had a dozen treatments or something? or Well, I went to him quite regularly for a short while and then of course later on when he quit then I had started to come got to stuck you. with me on right was it good though <laughs> oh, how was, was i back in the day like like early in because you understand you I, might have been one of my first patients did i, I did i was. seem like i knew what i was doing or no oh i think so okay. <laughs> i think dr himwell trained you well yeah he, he definitely trained me well something that i really liked about your treatment of course he was an older man and mm -hmm. and i really appreciated him he he did a wonderful job with me but one thing I really liked about your treatment is you just really treated the whole area. Okay. And without saying, okay, does it hurt here, here, there? Yeah, you know? he would he so would do he those axes. Yeah, yeah, which was fine. But I started. It that, took so much longer. Yeah. Well I, well, I started that way, but then what was like? In other words, like you're tender here, you're tender yeah. here, but you weren't tender here. Well, then people he, were coming back for that. So right. I just. You know, like since since people were there, that's what led me to just do the joint comprehensively. And I think time is told that's the right way to do it. Because yeah. if you have ligament injury here and you've had the thing for 20 years or it's 10 gonna years. It's going to have affected Yeah, you know. Yeah. And then, yeah, so that's, so Linda, so for somebody who doesn't know much about prolotherapy, how's your response been to prolotherapy? And for the most part, has the effect lasted or not lasted? Yes, it's lasted very well. I had come for some treatments, you know, to Dr. Hauser and then to you. 
I mean to Dr. Hemwall and then to you. And then at one point you had said to my husband, she's not getting the advantage of the treatment like she should. Something's wrong, can I do testing? And you did and it helped me out with thyroid and hormonal imbalance and a few things like that. And then uh, I was doing well. Mm -hmm. And then in 2002 we had another, we had an accident. And then I had to come back and have everything all done all over again. Yeah. And now it's been 19 years. It's done very well for me. Okay. I probably should have come back two years ago, but okay. since you had moved away, That's I waited. Fair. That's fair. I understand. <laughs> and the interesting thing was, you know, we put you through the whole thing with the Hauser Neck Center, all the diagnostics, mm -hmm. and your tests were so much better than other people who come here. And you know, my belief is it's all the looking down at the cell phone mm -hmm. and the addiction of the cell phone. And then you were a rare person who told me, that's not me. Mm -hmm. So are you saying like you, you, you're not addicted to the cell phone? Absolutely I'm not. I know, but why don't you tell our audience, like, because you, you understand the average person yeah. who, who... I have a cell phone yeah. and I use it occasionally. Yeah. But basically, I use the landline when I need a call. I'm, you okay. know, I'm just not a person that okay. that gets on the internet and stuff that much. Uh, okay. My husband has to do some of that, but yeah, I don't. <laughs> so you're not like all day long looking down at a cell phone. So obviously, the the average person would say, "Well, how do you spend your days?" Like obviously, you're a mother. How many kids? I have six. And then you have and, grandkids. Yeah, we have six grandchildren. Another okay. one on the way. Okay. Um, we have uh, three married children and three that are still not married. Okay. And so I do a lot of dishes and a lot of cooking and bake our holy bread. <laughs> oh, okay. That's, that's, you know, okay. I do a lot of those things. We do gardening. Uh, okay. I don't work in the garden very much myself because okay. that does irritate my back some okay. uh, with the condition I have. But okay. I do a lot of canning and freezing and, yeah. And I'm sure your faith over your lifetime has helped a lot. Why don't you just talk oh, yes. a little bit about that? Like, Well, I guess the Lord is really our life. <laughs> you know? okay. uh, yeah. Uh, I came to know the Lord when I was young, when I was like eight years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm really grateful for a, a Christian husband and leader in our home, you know. And uh, our children were homeschooled. I did homeschooling with them. Did you enjoy that? Was it? Yes. At first, I started with a little, am I qualified type thing, <laughs> you know, to teach brown children. Yeah. Uh, but having gone through the Pensacola Christian School for okay. the first two years, but we had been in part of Advanced Training Institute, which we really liked because as, as they got out of you know, some of the high school years and even during okay. that, they were able to take extra training. Like our oldest daughter had taken um, music training with okay. uh, not only uh, Lauren Elms but with uh, Dr. Kincaid, and so she got a real good basis in um, music theory and so forth. So mm -hmm. she actually teaches violin and piano lessons and harp lessons. Awesome. So yeah, and then some of our well, our next two children also had gone to Sound Foundations with them. And other opportunities as well. We've had some of them help in prison ministries in Florida. And in fact, about four of them, I guess, have done oh, that. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, and they continue to do some of that. So what would you say has been the highlights of you guys running a church for 30-some years? I have a very good relationship with my children now, and they're adults. Okay. And so awesome. that's okay. helpful. Uh, as far as highlights, I'd say we've had um, different experiences of counseling and so forth that have, and discipleship that we've okay. really appreciated, you know, that people have come to know the Lord and walked with the Lord. And then just, you know, the everyday things. But I think sometimes I think it was a little hard for my children at times because it's like, oh, well, the pastor's children have to be perfect, you know. Um, yeah, uh, my youngest daughter will you still just, tell me yeah, this from just, time yeah, to time. Yeah, you just can't live your life that way. It's, it's like, no, yeah. they're children too, so yeah. I didn't expect that of them necessarily. Yeah, but like I know there was a Sunday school teacher that had you know, kind of feel like well, my children ought to behave better than the others, and it's kind of like well, they're children. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> you know? right. No, I think like I got free. If I'm honest, 
the day I understood I have to not people please. Right. Because, you know, just, you know, even when I first started with Dr. Hemwall, I felt like I have to dress like him. I have to wear a suit. I have to wear all this. And it's no disrespect to him. It was good for him. Yeah. But, you know, me, I'm just so different than him. You know, and in some and ways okay. it's like, God, are you serious? Like the world expert in prolotherapy, you're going to have me? You know, like I'm like the antithesis of him, except we had that, we both had that thirst for the Lord. You know, like I, I really did want to have my life, like Dr. Hummel's life, to be significant where, you know, spent mm-hmm. a whole lifetime of helping people. But I didn't realize how much of my, how I lived was people pleasing. You know, it'd be like if you have to be a certain way because you're a pastor's wife. Right. It's very suffocating, if and lack of a term. So that's what I've tried to. Yeah. What we've tried to teach that's our children that good. we live for the audience of one, and that's yeah. the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, that's a good. That's a good <laughs> saying. An audience of one. Right. <laughs> Not necessarily pleasing people, but pleasing the Lord. No, that's good. Linda, thank you so much for sharing your story, and hope it helps a lot of people. Wow. Well. I'll say prolotherapy has really helped me, and that's why I'm back for a little bit more. Awesome. (laughs) 